Hello, gentle marketers. Welcome to the Gentle Business Revolution podcast, the show where we talk about marketing your business by disrupting the current marketing paradigm. I'm Sarah Zancroce, I'm the host here, and today is a very, very unusual episode. First of all, it's part of a series, the self-care series, and uh, second of all, I promised you now, I think twice already, that I was going to record an episode about insomnia and how to deal with not sleeping during these strange times. But since last week, uh, and remember, maybe you've heard last week's episode, I announced that COVID just entered the Santa Croce household. First, my son got it. And then a couple of days later, I got infected as well. And so uh, things have been a bit uh, different, let's say. We each uh, had to go into our room. I was isolated from the rest of the family, have also felt pretty under the weather. Um, I'll, I'll record an episode by itself about COVID and and how it was for me and how I think it would go for any healthy or considering themselves healthy persons. Um, but today's episode is different because once again, I just don't have the energy to record the insomnia episode, which was going to be a solo episode. So instead, I'm bringing you a conversation which I recorded with my friend Nicole Burgess, who's a licensed family therapist, and we talked about moving and exercise. So it's part of the self-care series, and uh, I think it really does matter, especially in these times. Unfortunately, uh, for like 10 days now, I couldn't leave the house. None of us could leave the house, so that I'm really missing that. Um, but even then, like even on my worst days, I still... Uh, turned on my computer and looked up um, yoga with Adrian and did a 20-minute uh, yoga for when you're sick um, session, which is mainly a bit of stretching and um, and also some lots of breathing exercises because I can definitely feel my lungs um, really being um, stretched here and, and like, you know, they, they're going through some extra effort. So uh, just kind of stretching and breathing uh, goes a long way, I think. So anyway, you you can probably hear it in my voice. I definitely hear it that I still am not my usual self. So I'm going to stop talking and uh, you'll hear my usual self giggling away with my friend and uh, previous client, Nicole Burgess. So I hope you enjoy that. I also won't do an outro um, for this one, but um, definitely don't forget to move. Thanks so much, and I'll be back soon. <laughs> Hi, Nicole. We're just laughing our heads off because we literally just got together for a catch-up call, right? That's what we do occasionally. And, uh, and I said, hey, I'm doing this series on self-care. Do you want to just hit record and, and talk about uh, some of the things that you do and, and that you help your clients with patients. How do you call them clients or patients? I call them clients, whether yeah. they're my clinical clients or they're my coaching clients or my clients. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so, so maybe what you should do is tell listeners who you are and, you know, kind of like who you work with and, um, and how you help them get through these tough times right now. Yeah, so I've got two different businesses. One is located in Indiana, and I work with teen girls and women who struggle with anxiety, maybe depression or some uh, past traumas that's kind of getting in their way. So we work through those things and how to overcome it, work through it. Self-care is definitely brought into my clinical side. And then my coaching side, I work with a lot of high-achieving, highly sensitive and introverted women, whether they're entrepreneurs or they're um, in their own career as like a manager, things like that. They like what they really are doing, like their career or business, but they often are burning out because they're doing a lot of hustling and they feel overwhelmed. And so my work with them is being able to slow down so they can actually achieve more. 
but mm-hmm. also make sure that they're taking care of themselves. So self-care is one of my big foundation, I want to say pillars, for all the work that I do. So often, right, we as women get so many mixed messages. If we're caretakers of others, it's selfish to be um, putting yourself first. And it's not, we're not saying you are narcissistic (laughs) if you are putting yourself first. It's saying, I need my rest. I need to be eating what works for my body, for me. I need to be exercising, tuning into me so I stay in alignment really with my values. But then I'm not yelling at other people. I'm not as irritable and I'm able to, you know, earn an income because I'm showing up every day when I need to for work or home life. And if we don't have self-care built into our daily kind of plan or daily schedules, then we don't have it. And that's where it really leads to that burnout or exhaustion or adrenal fatigue. So many women have had that. Ariana Huffington, right? She wrote a book about that. Um, and so, she wrote about so, adrenal fatigue. I know about her sleep book, but she, well, is that she, one before? Uh, well, not necessarily. Uh, let me take it back because I haven't read her her specific book on sleep, but mm-hmm. I know she did. Um, it was an article and or I think a an interview with somebody where she talked about she was on the go so often and so much she had adrenal fatigue. I mean, Mm. it just wiped her off, right? right? Wiped her down. And when we are in that mindset of just, we need to push, go, 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 you're going to hit it. And we've got this pandemic, right? That is still going on. So we've got parents um, that have been home with their children since March. Mm. (laughs) Oh, that's one kind of overwhelm right there at some certain times, depending on ages. A lot of parents and families are doing um, in school at the home, even though they're logging in online. Some kids are doing a hybrid method where they're going into the classroom and doing stuff online. So it's a huge learning curve for both the kids, for the parents. Then you've got spouses that are like, I love you, but I'm seeing a lot of you. I want you to go away. <laughs> right? Like, do we have to eat together again? Again, <laughs> right. We've done three meals together. I would like a little space, right? So if you're not leaving your home to go to an office, to even have that physical distance when you're working there, it's a lot all the time. And we know as introverts and or highly sensitives, because you and I are both of those things, right. that if you've got that energy around all the time, it literally impacts your nervous system because there's so much stimulation going on and you have to have some ways for your self-care routine to take that stimulation down. So you're not like wired and fried all at the same time due Mm. to overstimulation. Yeah. So tell me more about this adrenal fatigue because it's one of the things I just recently read about. And I think it was in uh, Remember our common friend, Tanya, she recommended uh, this book about Ayurveda and hormonal balance. And so I really got into that and it was, it was fascinating. And, um, and there, this lady, um, if I could only remember her name, her first name, I don't remember. I think it was Welsh, something Welsh. Um, so if people want to look it up. And, and she explained this balance between the yang hormones so the stress hormones and the yin hormones so well that it all started to really make sense to me oh that's what people mean when they're referring to adrenal fatigue it basically means too much of these stress hormones that completely override the other uh hormones right the the ones that are supposed to make us feel good right yeah, so I'm not a doctor, so I'm going to put that disclaimer out there. So yeah. people like talk with your doctor about that. But part of what adrenal fatigue is, is it's like you've got your gas pedal going all the time. You've got it full going. And then sometimes you slam on the brake and then you hit the gas pedal again. And then you slam on the brake and you hit your parasympathetic and your sympathetic nervous system. And right now, um, <laughs> I can't even talk well about that because I'm like, well, I've got so many things going on in my mind. But when you do that, start, stop, start, stop, but you've mostly got everything floored, that gas pedal all the way down, it's as if you're trying to live in those future moments so much. So that means our stress levels are up, means our cortisol levels are up. And we know with high cortisol levels, that impacts your blood vessels, so you like it impacts your heart, everything. And it can create plaque, it can create all kinds of things. Well, that also taps into those adrenals. 
Right. And when your adrenal's like, oh my gosh, so that saber tooth tiger is really coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And you do that long enough, it depletes everything because it's this perceived thing coming after you and there's nothing there. And it's like it can't actually um, come online when it needs to with a true danger. And when it's depleted, it'll literally wipe you out. I mean, there's women I know who extremely successful, but they were bedridden for months. Mm. They were not allowed to really do anything per doctor's orders because they were just wiped out. And you sometimes can recover from adrenal fatigue, but if you've done it enough or long enough, you may not recover from it. And then mm. there's medications you may need to be on to help with all of that. And so that's why self-care is so important and having more of those, the balance of when you're really tapping into your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system of a gas pedal break and you're doing it more gently. So that's why the exercise is good. And you've talked about meditation, you know, all these things, Ayurveda, what you're putting into your body, all of that matters. And if you're not doing those things, yeah, you can end up with a huge honk on hospital bill, lose your job because you can't get out of bed, um, lose your business, or lose your marriage. You know, all, it impacts everything if you aren't taking care of you. Right. So let's talk a bit more about exercise because, like I said, I had uh, one on meditation and and one on supplements. And so exercise is kind of what we said. Okay, we'll focus on that. And I think exercise it's this word where immediately I think most people still go to like running or exactly. you know, aerobics or like something again, very yang energy. Um, where it's like, oh, I need to get all this extra uh, thing out of my body, which is adrenaline based, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so in a way aren't we making things worse if we now think, oh, I need to get all this energy out. I'm going to go running one hour at night. Mm. Yeah. And it's for some people, right? We know that works really well because that is kind of how, again, their body is wired. That type of exercise is great. And we also know that it can cause other kinds of injuries if you do it, if you overdo it. Mm -hmm. And when I work with my clients, I'm like, you don't need to do the, I call it the hardcore stuff, right? Where it's very adrenaline, high impact. That's the word I was looking for, high mm -hmm. impact, where you're pounding the pavement literally, which is causing, you know, jolting in the knees and the back and different things. I often recommend gentle stretching, right? Mm -hmm. So that can be Pilates, that can be yoga. I, um, I love um, Esmeralda, uh, that's Miranda White. That's what well, my name's coming up. But anyway, she does eccentrics. Mm -hmm. um, hers is very much, she blends like yoga, Pilates, dance, all these things. And it's based upon, you know, she had severe pain issues. And so she blended these techniques together. And it really is very gentle stretching. It's very gentle moving, but it's getting the blood flowing in all different parts of your body. I take walks like on my treadmill, take walks outside that low impact, still get your heart rate up, still get you moving. And I know as a, a clinician, for all the work I've done, for all the trainings I've done, we know that stress gets stored in our cells, right? Mm -hmm. And trauma gets stored in our cells. And when we move, whether you lift weights, you're doing the stretching, you're releasing so much of that from the body. And right now, yeah, when you said, you know, when we think of exercise, the first image that literally came to my head was running. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I despise running. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't like it. And if I'm thinking of those things, not knowing there's we know logically there's so many other things we can do, but if we keep coming back to that old thought process and that turns us off, then we don't do it yet. It's like, but I know exercise would help me overall. It's like, yeah, so start out small, mm -hmm. but get your body moving in a way that you're actually like, oh, I'm having fun. Even dancing, stick on some tunes with you, your kids, whatever, dance, look goofy. It doesn't matter. It's all about moving it to release the stress or a huge sadness, right? There's a lot mm -hmm. of sadness and grief that is also going on mm -hmm. and being able to move and just get the blood flow or there's expressive dance you can do create a dance that actually expresses what you're feeling in the moment. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling anger, you dance it out. If you're feeling sadness, dance it out. If you're feeling happiness, dance it out. But you can do it in whatever form that works for you, but it's move the body so you feel better. 
Yeah. I yeah, I'm so glad to hear that because I think it shouldn't be <laughs> funny. It shouldn't be a should, right? Like yeah. <laughs> and 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 running I've done it many years until I, until I realized, oh, that's just another should that I adding I'm adding to my list because it felt like it's a thing that an ambitious woman does, you know, mm-hmm. got to take care of my body. Okay. I got to run yep. and yeah, no more. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I know for me, there's times where like when it's cold outside and I don't want to take the walks outside. I, so I go on to the treadmill and I, that first few moments, I'm like, there's the old thought process that comes up. Oh, I don't want to do this. Oh, I don't like this. Mm-hmm. And then I grab a book that I'm interested in. And I turn that little beauty on and it starts to move. And once those first few moments I get through my, that's my own little wall. Mm. I get through that. I'm like, it's really not that bad. And when I am done, I'm like, I really feel so much better. My mood may have shifted or I feel more energized. I get, we get the endorphins that can go, but it's also just like, I feel good in me. Yeah. And you're bringing that your own strength right into your home life, into your career and your business. And so it's like there again, the common denominator is you. Yeah. And you're fully showing up. I love that. What my husband and I started doing as well is is at night we just do, I don't know, it doesn't even take 10 minutes. We do three sets of planks. And we yep. just do that every time, you know, after a bit after dinner. And we're like, yeah. yeah. It's a fun moment. It's not like we're, you know, sweating and <laughs> huffing and puffing, but planks is a very good full body exercise and it's yep. easy to do. You can do it in your living room and yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's a thing we do together. So, it's self-care together <laughs> if you want. Yeah. yeah. And again, I like you're even bringing that's like you you're, you're still in the same room you're doing it together i mean there's yoga that is actually designed specifically for couples yeah right and there's ways you can stretch and kind of balance one another yeah, and i saw a video on that i don't think i can get them to do that <laughs> <laughs> but again there's more options fun. right yeah. it's like thinking yeah. like what works now what could we do and again as adults it's trying to spice things up yeah. creating new neurological pathways versus well this is the same of the same of the same it's like but it doesn't need to be yeah. we get to create the newness yeah. whatever form that looks like yeah. What I also just really think is that this time right now gives us the space to create new habits for a lifetime. Yes. That's what I, yeah, that's how I look at it really. It's like, okay, my business is a bit slower right now. What am I building in right now that I'm not going to just ditch when things get busier again? No, this, these are things that I'm going to, keep doing like for the rest of my life. And yes, there'll be moments that I won't do it, but, but like it becomes a habit, right. Yeah. And, or a routine. And, and so I think what you said at the beginning, it's like, don't overdo it. Like just, you know, just, if you can only do a 15 minute walk around the neighborhood, that's plenty. That's good enough. Right. Yep. But the, again, it's like, remember this is life is a marathon, it mm-hmm. is a process. It's not all these sprints. I mean, sprints, I think, are when we're, uh, let's, well, I'll keep it business wise in the sense of like you're launching something very specific. That would be a sprint. Your kid is involved in some certain sport. Maybe that's a sprint because there's more of it. And, you know, families are recognizing if they are working from home, they're traveling less. So they are, they've got more time to kind of be with one another if they choose to do home improvement projects if they want to. Kids are feeling better because they're not having to travel to so many sports Mm -hmm. for some kids, right? They're doing that differently or they've stopped them totally. Other kids are finding no work. We've got things canceled and all of a sudden their schedules got more jammed up. I'm like, that's all information, to make a more informed decision. Do you want to keep it going that way or do you want to do that differently? So like what you're saying, there's ample ample opportunity to look at what works and what isn't Mm. and be Mm -hmm. intentional with it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Like really getting this opportunity to choose, right? Where before we, we, what you said, yeah, I saw this so clearly, all these moms running around from this sports activity to this volunteering activity to this and that and this and that. And that's what, th- those are the people who end up in your, um, in, on your chair, right? right. <laughs> because 
because you're overdoing it. And, and so right now we really get this chance to say, okay, this one is really important to me. I want to keep doing that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, some of the other ones, I'm actually going to let them go so that then I don't have the excuse anymore to say I don't have time for self-care. Right. Because I think that's been a lot of times the excuse. It's like, I don't have time. It's funny that that notion of time. uh, We were just talking about this yesterday with another friend because she went to a networking event at 6.30 a.m. I'm like, oh my God, 6.30 a.m. That's just like, oh, it was the BNI. They're they're doing these crazy networking events at 6.30 in the morning. (laughs) It's like craziness and we were both saying yeah they're still stuck in this old model of I can never do enough and so I have to squeeze in the networking at 6 30 (laughs) a.m where nobody's even awake yet because it's it's kind of not working so I have to like do it before I then have a full day of work right Uh that's insane it's just pathetic is it, it's fascinating get i mean there's there's true heart hardships and heartbreak during this pandemic and pandemic and what's going on and i'm not i don't want to i don't want your listeners to think at all i'm minimizing that and some of this it, it is it's like if you allow yourself to pause for a moment you can really look at like like you're saying that's an old paradigm that we've got to squeeze more and more and more in our schedule why where is that coming from? What am I making that mean? Why do I think I need to keep doing it that way? And when we pause and say that doesn't know that no longer works for me or for my family or for my business or for my career, it's like we have an opportunity to be able to say, how about we try this instead? Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. yeah. You think they will? I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, I think the other thing I was going to say that I, I even sidetracked myself is there's a lot of things we're starting to see if if you take the observer standpoint of how many things are actually broken, right? Like you're saying, you are being so intentional of creating new, healthier habits to create the life that you're really wanting to to live going forward, right? But we we get in our old ruts. We keep doing the same of the same, like, well, that's just because I've been doing it for so long this way. And I just Mm -hmm. cram everything in and I just don't know anything different. It's like, you really have an opportunity to see before there's a a health crisis, before you lose, you know, family members or you lose your business or something like you've got this opportunity to say, wow, I do have options Mm -hmm. to change this. Mm -hmm. And I fully understand if, if you are hustling right now, this is your sprint because you are trying to make the rent. You're trying to make that mortgage payment. You're trying to put food on the table for your family. This is your sprint. But I'm hoping you're also gaining insight of like, okay, what can I do next so that I'm not having to sprint? But I, whether it's a pivoting in my career, I'm gaining education on the side so I can get into something that helps me be able to do this if we were to ever experience this again. And they're predicting that there will be another pandemic, hopefully not in another hundred or so years. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's part of that and saying, how can I build this in so I don't let time be the excuse of I don't have it? Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll have to come back with another episode on time alone. I mean, that's mm-hmm. just, that's one of my favorite topics. And I know it is one for you as well, because that's what you help your clients with a lot, right? It's this idea of there's never enough time. I'm always running. I'm always hustling. I want to do everything and I want to be perfect for everything. And then the reason why that comes up so much is because I get it, right? I know it's like, I get it's like, oh, there's times where I'm hustling. I'm like, why am I doing this? And I've had people feedback, you're just really busy. And I'm like, some of it I'm enjoying. So I don't find it busy. I just find it exciting. And I like the flow of it. But it is that continue to come back like, what, what am I doing this for? And do I need to continue to do that? Did I just get caught up in something? Mm. So I, you know, there's no perfection in that for me. It's like, there's a give and take where I'm like, I'm in harmony. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. (laughs) Yeah. It's a continuing learning experience, I'd say. Mm. But I think once a a few things click, Mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I can actually take the time. Yeah. Because everybody has the same amount of time. 
Yep. Mm -hmm. And you and I've talked about it too, where it it is very, so counterintuitive to us that instead of speeding up, slowing down actually gives you more of what it is you want, whether it's financially, whether it's the being more connected, whether it's doing the things that you love to do. It's maybe it's like, no, but I have to hurry up and cram it in, Mm -hmm. you know, actually take things out and you'll watch other things blossom because mm. you will be more present. You will show up better and able to say no without that guilt. Mm-hmm. And that's really what those boundaries are. That's what all that yeah, work you've been going for is. That's how it's paying off. Yeah. Slow down. <laughs> We're pretty good. We're pulling this off pretty good. I think <laughs> We're just like a random hit the record button. But let's bring it back to self-care just to wrap things up. What would you like... I'm not going to say three because when you're kind of trying to think of three, sometimes you can't. So just say like your top tips for self-care that you would share with the listeners. Uh, for for anyone who is highly sensitive and listen to this, if you need to rearrange your blasted morning schedule, please do. Mm-hmm. Don't hit that snooze button 5,000 times before you get up because you create your own chaos. You create your own franticness that doesn't need to happen. Hit this, hit the button, or make your alarm. When your alarm goes off, build in like a half hour. Start with a half hour. Start with 15 minutes where you can ease into your day. Take your shower, you know, have a couple minute morning meditation, get grounded in your body. If you can journal a little bit, do gentle stretches, something along that. So you know you're starting your day in an easier pace versus franticness. If you've got more space, let's say you have an hour. I would say do some sort of exercise. Again, the yoga, Pilates, taking a walk, getting back out into nature because we we know nature does calm the nervous system. It does put you in a different state of being. Um, And if you've got your little anxious thoughts going around because it's got the chatter boxes going first thing in the morning, oh, I've got to have a conversation with so-and-so, this is going on, grab a quick piece of paper, just jot a couple bullet points of what it is that that fear is telling you and saying, I got it. Thank you so much for letting me know and I'll manage it when I get there. And then Mm -hmm. come back to the moment by taking a few slow, deep breaths in through your nose, count four, exhale for a count of six. That'll help expand your vagus nerve in the back and get you more in a calm state as well. So just little, seriously, so much, many of these things are like a minute here, a minute there, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there can really help you stay in a calmer state and be more in your body versus the anxious brain that wants to go all over the place. Mm. Yay. Thank you so much, Nicole, for doing this. Yeah, thank you. I hope the listeners found, found some, ideas in there in our babbling and um, thanks for coming on. (laughs) 